Good morning, guys. It's Chris from the DaxTrader.co.uk, and today we're going to take a look at getting started uh, on Sierra charts. So, if you have already got yourself a Sierra charts demonstration or demo account or whatever it is uh, installed, then great. If you haven't, then this video is one step ahead of that. You're going to need to go and get your first experience of the Sierra Charts website. If you like reading, you'll love that website. If you're not the biggest reader, then this video will be great. <laughs> so today what we're gonna look through would be a simple overview of Sierra Charts, an introduction to uh, this financial market charting and trading application. It's just so advanced that I absolutely adore it. And we're gonna look at how to change the appearance of it, how to connect your charts to the data or trading service and how to open the charts themselves. We're also gonna take a look at how you can submit an order, how you can find uh, a bit more documentation and uh, really just give you a, a, a crash course in how to get started with it. All right, so let's get, let's get straight in. So at the moment you'll notice that I've got a, a gray screen here and the charting platform might or might not appear this way as you set it up. All of these different icons that you see at the top are my own custom configurations of my control bars. And they're just tools and things that I use all the time. Now they actually look a bit blurry at the moment. So I'm gonna load up a chart just to kind of get that to wake up a little bit. All right, and the chart that I'm gonna load up, simply being a DAX trader, is gonna be the German DAX. All right, so I'm gonna to go to file and I'm gonna find the symbol that I need. Now you'll notice with Sierra charts, depending on who you trade with or what you like to trade, you'll probably be well catered for with all the different symbols that are on here. Uh, the majority of markets are on there. Maybe apart from stocks, individual stocks and shares, I haven't actually explored that, but you'll probably find the majority of the things that you want uh, on there. All right, so I'm going to go to the DAX. Now I'm a futures trader, so I'm going to look for the DAX, or the F DAX specifically. So I'm going to go in this little search box down here and just type the F DAX and then just simply click on find next. Now with DAX, there are two types of contract. You've either got the full 25 euro a point F DAX contract, and we're currently in the September one, or you can go to the F DAX mini contract which is the FDXM. I wonder whether that actually comes up if we search for that. It does. All right. And that'll be in the September contract as well. So I'm going to actually load up this one because I don't trade full contracts. I don't have big enough pockets for that. Although I know some of you guys do. A 25 euro a point on a market as volatile as this with as fewer people trading it. It's, uh, yeah, it's expensive. All right, so what I did there is I, I clicked on open intraday chart. Okay, that button there, and it loaded up behind me this chart. So I can now go ahead and just close this window or press the X, and there you have it. Now, I am, one again, one step ahead here because I've already connected my data feed to this. When you first get started with uh, Sierra Charts, you're probably gonna have to connect yourself to that data service. and it's pretty easy to do, but it might just seem a little bit counterintuitive when you first get started. You'd almost expect it to be done. But even with MetaTrader and other ones like that, you're going to have to do something similar. So how do we do that? Well, there's plenty of instructions on the website, on the Sierra Chart website to do so. But the easiest way would be to simply find the global settings part of your charts then go to data trade service settings. And you can just simply use SC data, all services. That is just the standard Sierra charts default data feed, if you like. All right. So by default, Sierra charts is set to work with that particular selection. And it kind of unifies all the different Sierra Charts provided data into a single connection. Now, if you have your own data feed, CQG or LMAX or whoever, uh, then you can go ahead and connect this 
via an API or a fix or whatever with, with your uh, credentials, you can connect your data feed or your um, account if you want to, to this charting package. I personally don't do that. I keep my charting and my execution platform separate. Just in case whenever I'm trading, for example, or auto trading or simulation trading, I click a wrong button and accidentally open up a whole bunch of orders that I didn't want. So I just personally keep them separate. But if you want to combine them, you can. So that is pretty much all you do. Once you've connected by clicking on this SC data, all services data and connected it up, you should be able to simulation trade, get your data feed and, and search for all the markets that you want to do. Now, in my example, I've actually connected a Urex feed to the chart. So this data feed is not CFD or simulated or combined from all the different various providers. This is just comes from the exchange, the Urex exchange. Now, you might not trade the DAX. You might trade the S&P or the American markets, or maybe you trade some of the Asian indices. Whichever futures exchange you're getting that data from, you will need to purchase a subscription to that data feed and you can then connect that data feed into Sierra charts. We won't cover that today in here. It's a bit more advanced, but you can do it if you want to. All right. Okay, so easiest way to get started with Sierra charts and see how well it works is to use the provided real time and historical Forex CFD data service. Um, and all the symbols for these services are included in that. Uh, SC data or services feed. That's basically the one we just selected. All right. So that's already there. It's already set up by default. So if you wanted the euro dollar, for example, the Forex uh, or any of the other kind of major or minor pairs, you can do so really easily. If you want to go on to the S&P 500 CFD, you can do that. It's really simple to just change the symbol. All right. What else can we take a look at here? I'm going to go back into this global setting set setup here because there's a few things probably to just tick off as we go along here. All right. Uh, excuse me. It was the data, wasn't it? There we go. So I've just gone back to global settings, data trade service settings, and it might just be worth paying attention to a few of these other things. For example, your time zone might just be worth getting that all set up um, just to make sure that you're displaying it in whatever you want it to do down here there's a checkbox saying allow support for sierra chart data feeds it's probably worth checking that just to ensure that when data uh, you know can be downloaded or received from sierra charts that it will be done properly it's generally always enabled but you probably want to make sure you do that And I've just changed those. I'm just going to cancel that off. There we go. Now, the toolbar at the top might be different for you. We can change that in another video. No problem. And I can send you this setup if you want this setup. But we'll do that another time. And I'm going to just get you in on a very, very simple cheat that you can do with Sierra charts all right so at the moment we are looking at a one minute FDAX mini chart okay let's say if I want to change that to a five minute chart if I just simply click anywhere on this chart and type onto the chart the number five followed by the letter M and then press return changes it to a five minute chart I chain letter uh, the number 30 and then M changes it to a 30 minute chart. You get the idea. If you do 240 M, it's going to be a 240 minute chart. And so you can pretty much do any combination that I, I actually missed the zero off. That's a 24 minute chart. But so you can do any combination of time. So if you wanted to do an unusual one, like 155 minutes, you can do that. Um, I wonder if you can do a fractional 18.5 minutes. Doesn't do that. But you can play around with those. But it's not just minutes. You can also go into seconds. So if you want a 30-second chart, you can do 30 and then the letter S. And that'll give you a 30-second chart. You can even go down to a one-second chart if you really want that. 
Uh, so as far as the granularity of this data is concerned, you can go into it as deeply as you want to. If you want tick charts, put the T after it. So a 55 tick chart, for example, so it's not a time-based chart, it's a tick-based chart. Um, some of this information might be new to you. Some of this information you might not understand what I'm talking about. If that's the case, um, we can cover that in another video for you. But that's just a quick crash course of how to change the time frame on the chart. Other ways you can do that would be to go into your global settings. Then your, I think it's the general settings section. Because I just use my keyboard, I don't actually generally tend to do that. <laughs> it's crazy, isn't it? When you don't actually use a sit, uh, the, the, the settings themselves, and then when you need them. I'll be more prepared for that for the next time. But uh, in the settings, which is actually F5, chart settings, I don't tend to use the uh, toolbars at the top, um, then you can change, if you wanted to, the chart data type that you're looking at here. And uh, I think you can even change the time frame if it was on a historical bar over here as well. But I never use that. I just simply type it into the chart. All right. Now you'll quickly start to understand that when you get into Sierra charts, it might seem like it's a bit of a learning curve. And I appreciate that. It's quite a lot to get your head around only to begin with. But once you've got the basics, you realize you don't actually need all of the different functionalities and tools that it has. If you just want basic charting, it's very, very simple to get it set up. And it's very, very quick and easy and lightweight to move around uh, on your computer. All right. Now, we've just changed the time frame, but what if we want to change the symbol? Same idea, we can either go to find symbol like we did before and look for another one and just open it up and it will bring up a new chart. And if it brings up a new chart, that means we've got two. You can tile the charts, um, bring them around to, to, to find the different ones. However, if you don't want multiple charts and you just want to change the chart that you've got here, you can type the symbol, if you know what it is, onto the chart directly. So for example, Euro USD. I have keyboard shortcuts configured on mine, so I'm gonna have to press shift and type it in capital letters. And I've just typed Euro USD, so E U R U S D, you know how to spell that, and it will just simply bring that up. And so I'm now looking at a 55 tick chart on the Euro USD. All right. Same idea if you want the FTSE CFD UK 100, you can do the same thing on that. But I'm going to go back to the, the DAX, which is at the moment TMU 18. All right, there you go, that's that. Chart settings then, if you want to change the way that this looks or appears, maybe you don't like the white background, maybe you wanna change all of that, you can easily customize this by going to global settings, graphics settings, and then you can adjust the colors and the font sizes and whatever you want, pretty much everything all in there. I pretty much like the standard setup, nothing to, to change for me there. And once you've got yourself started, I would say start getting familiar with the scaling side of things just to make sure that you understand how to move the chart around. You can click the, uh, the grid line on the, on the, uh, the axis on the right hand side in order to scale up, scale down. You could do the same on the bottom one to scale in and scale out. You can use your scrolling wheel in the middle of the mouse to zoom in and zoom out and you can click and drag the chart around all over the place, okay? If you right click on the chart, you can change your candlesticks. You can even get rid of them. Okay, and there's a few other options on this right click that I've got, um, which I believe is standard. So you can duplicate the chart, you can duplicate the chart to a workbook, uh, you can add indicators or studies, you can copy the chart image, 
paste it somewhere else. You can upload it to the Sierra Chart server and they give you a link. And then you can look at your settings for your studies. And for me, I, yes, I do go into the details of this and I do program in C++ and I do do lots of other stuff with it behind the scenes. <clears throat> but when I'm just using charting tools, all of the tools that I need are in this top bar. And all of the studies I need are right-click studies. All right, well, we'll look at studies another time in a different, uh, different video. Now, once you've got your chart set up the way you like it, I would recommend that you save it into a chart book. All right, so think about a chart book as, as, as literally that is a book that you can close the book and it will save everything you've done. It's like a template, but doesn't kind of clog up everything. Because a chart book isn't just one chart. A chart book, you can have multiple charts. So you can have as many as you like. And I've just pressed Alt and R to, to tile these windows. Um, or you could just go window tile. doesn't really matter. And so once you've got these four charts, let's say they're all different time frames. Maybe one's a Renko chart. Maybe one's a, a different time frame, whatever it might be. You can save them all into a chart book. And whenever you load that chart book up, all of this information will be here. So you might have one chart book for the DAX, you might have another chart book for FTSE, you might have another chart book for the S&P 500, whatever it might be, the Dow. And you can just shift between those and they're always open if you've got the chart books open in the background. Look. Okay, so you can just simply flick from one to another. This is the one that I use for the webinars. This is my DAX chart book. And this is the one I think that we've just been playing around with chart book 13. It's called that because I haven't named it as anything. So I would recommend file, save as, change the name of the chart book. All right. And then whenever you load up the Sierra charts, file, open chart book, and you've got your chart set up there. Now, there are a huge amount of features and things built into Sierra charts. We are really only looking at the very, very basics and uh, this is skimming the top, not even that, of what you can do with this stuff. There are so many other things that you can do. And as we go through this kind of series of videos, we're going to start looking into some more of those features and functions. Because I believe that this particular platform is going to be one of the top ones that will be used. There are others like Ninja Trader and uh, TradeStation and things like that. I'm not saying that Sierra Charts is the only one you should use but it is one of the better ones that are out there. So I uh, highly, highly recommend you get yourself an investment in a better trading platform. If you're using something like MetaTrader or, or, or something at the moment, time for an upgrade. It's time for an upgrade, especially if you're serious about your trading. If you're only trading on a you know, relatively small account and you don't believe it's worth investing in a platform, then fine. But if you are trading an account that's, uh, if you're trading in a bit of volume and you don't already have a platform like this, then you need to get that sorted. And I recommend Sierra Charts highly. If you want more information about it, the details are in the description below. Contact me on Twitter or Telegram if you want more information. But for today, we'll leave it there and we'll be back again tomorrow with another one. All right, take care.